Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. There are times when one must make a decision, and that decision we're going to talk about today is how do you hire a business coach? It can be daunting to hire any type of coach because you want to ensure that the coach is a right fit for you and that you're going to be able to achieve the results that are promised. So today I'd like to share with you my thoughts on how to hire a business coach and the things that you need to consider when you're planning to hire a business coach. Now, one of the first things is to consider your values. People and coaches are not always what they appear to be online. Ask questions to determine that the coach that you want to hire is aligned with your values. Now, as Christian entrepreneurs, that becomes especially critical. Is it clear what this coach that you're considering to hire believes in? Does this coach have new age beliefs? You can learn this from their copy and their social media posts. Do they use terminology like the universe, manifesting? Do they focus on astrology or astrologic terms? Are they using the phrase heart-centered a lot? And you can get a feel for the types of images they have on their website and the content, the copy that they're sharing to determine whether or not they are a Christian business coach for one, but two, even if they're not a Christian business coach, are they pushing new age philosophies that could potentially lead you down a track or a journey that is not in your best interest? This is going to sound kind of silly, but does the coach use a lot of curse words? If you don't use curse words in your vocabulary, then you're not going to want to have a coach that uses them either because it's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel authentic and it's not going to put you at ease when you're working together. Is it clear who this coach serves? Who are their soulmate clients? And do you fit in to the person that they describe? If you are a woman, do you want a business coach for women, someone who truly understands your challenges of work, life, family, motherhood, balance. The coach-client relationship is invaluable. Your femininity is crucial to your business success and living authentically and confidently in who God has created you to be. So having the support of another woman, a female business coach, is a blessing because she will understand the ebbs and flows of emotions and the pulls and tugs on your time and your schedule and some of those challenges that are most important to you. Here are some additional questions that you can ask to determine if the coach is going to provide the value that you desire and that you expect from the business coach that you hire. Does this coach have experience and expertise in what you need? How long have they been in business? What is their career journey? Are they certified or do they have credentials? And I'm not saying being certified or having credentials is the end all be all. However, it's very important for you to determine if this person feels qualified to help you. Are they at a level above where you're at? Are they going to encourage you and push you to strive for something greater, excuse me, than where you are today? Will this coach understand your business and what you need? Can this coach help you with all aspects of your business? If they specialize, then be sure that specialty is where your root problem lies. 
what do your testimonials say about this coach? Do they indicate that she or he can help you with your challenges? And does this coach have a business that's similar to yours? In other words, do they appear to truly understand your mission, your goals, your clients, and the desires that you wish to achieve? Does the coach provide value on the discovery call? Was it proven that he or she is the one to hire? Can you trust this person? Do you feel an emotional connection with this person? You're not going to necessarily be best friends with your coach. However, it is deeply important to have trust to feel confident in how they're going to treat you, that they understand your problems, your challenges. And it's important to have that baseline relationship so that you can continue to grow because that is how trust grows. And the more you trust this person, the more confidence you're gonna have in their ability to help you and the less confused you're going to be as you navigate the coach-client relationship and boundaries. Now, the cost of a coaching program can also help you determine whether or not it's a right fit for you. Is cost an indicator of whether or not this coach is a good coach or not a good coach? Oftentimes, price is related to quality and value. It is important to note that whether or not, I should say, the coach's price point is within your reach. But the more critical question that you can ask is whether the perceived value equates to the price. I'm going to link in the show notes an episode I recently published just a couple of weeks ago. I think it was episode 350 on the ROI of coaching. If you are questioning the perceived value and whether or not it's worth the price, do the exercise that you can find in that episode, but how much are you investing and how much do you charge for your clients? One of the key things to consider is, will this coach look at your packages and offers your, your and your prices to determine whether or not your ROI can improve, right? So we'll get to that list of questions in a minute, but that ROI, generally speaking, is there. So go back to listen to that episode if you'd like more information on that specifically, ROI. Now, many coaches are going to claim that they're going to get you to six figures or higher. They're going to take you from six figures to seven figures. They're going to take you from ground zero to six figures. That's all great, but how do they do that? If you aren't looking at your business as a whole, your business isn't going to grow at gangbuster rates. Do or does that coach look specifically or solely at marketing and sales? Or do they examine the back end of your business to help you save on expenses and evaluate your spend versus your revenue? Working on marketing and sales is only one part of a business growth strategy. You must have processes in place for customer service, to have a good customer experience, and client retention. Without processes in place, you're not going to have good customer service, and you're not going to create a pleasant customer experience that's going to lead them to tell other people about you or to stick around within your community. You have to be ready to take the recommended action if you want to get results. So yes, this coach may be saying, I'm going to get you to mid six figures, but are you in a position to take all of the action steps that they're suggesting? And more importantly, are the action steps that this coach hangs their hat on aligned with you, your business, and your values? 
it does get to be tricky, but if you want to hire a business coach and you want to hire the coach that is best for you and your business, it is very important to evaluate all of these factors. Since your beliefs influence your thoughts, which empower your emotions and feelings and help determine your choices and behaviors, you must believe this coach is the right one for you and that their recommendations are gold, that they're practical and that you're going to be able to implement them. They fit into your value scheme. They fit into your lifestyle. And that ultimately this coach is going to be worth every penny that you pay for them. So who is the best coach for you? We all want the best. <laughs> so it's no surprise that you want to hire the best coach, right? Not the coach that says they're the best. Yet what others say about coach is an integral part in that decision-making process. I am very, very passionate about this because we often look at coaches and we see like who they've worked with or, you know, who their clients have been. We see the cost of their program and we think, oh, I have to work with them. They have to be the best. However, this is rarely the best judgment when hiring a coach. I've seen it so many times and I've experienced myself. Coaches make claims, but they don't always deliver. Some tend to focus on one or two areas, but they don't know the ins and outs of building a solid foundation for sustainable success. They believe they know best and will force their opinions on you, causing you to change your mind or your messaging. When that happens, you end up backpedaling. But the reality is that when they create confusion for you, then you no longer trust yourself, your confidence wavers, and your messaging becomes unclear. This in turn causes confusion with your community, with your audience, with the people you're trying to reach. And sadly, confused people do not buy. So if you're choosing a coach, don't choose it based on who they've worked with and the success that those people appear to have. Don't hire them based on their claim that they're going to get you to X amount of money or that they are the best. Ensure that they are aligned with your values, your goals, your business strategies, and how you want to get to a place of sustainability. So the best business coach is going to be a coach who understands, number one, your specific needs, has a comprehensive and customized approach to working with their clients, with you, and someone that will hold you accountable. They will respect you, but they will lovingly hold you accountable so that you can take the right action in the right order to get the results that you desire. And the coach that's right for you is also going to have the gift to be able to recognize what's holding you back or when things arise as you're working together, such as mindset challenges that are preventing you from taking action, putting one foot in front of the other to actually move your business forward and get the results you desire. Now, I'm going to say this, and it sounds kind of um, self-promotional probably, but something to consider is that you want one-stop coaching. This is crucial. If you have to hire someone to help you with each aspect of your business, plus someone to help you with mindset, you are going to end up spending a fortune and you're going to have confused messages you're going to be confused. And if you're confused, you're going to procrastinate and you aren't going to grow. You really do want someone who is going to be able to eliminate the guesswork for you. 
who can eliminate the guesswork in every aspect of your business so that you can build faster. No one wants to spend more time building than getting results. The faster we build, and when we have help, we can build faster, but we can build efficiently, and that is key. You want to hire someone that will recognize when your mindset is holding you back, as I said before. And you want someone that will be able to guide you and kind of hold your hand to implement strategies that are going to be effective for navigating those mindset challenges. You want someone who can re recognize cost-saving op opportunities within the back end of your business. Someone who's actually going to examine every aspect of your business, your balance sheet, your profit and loss statements, what you're investing in that you aren't even using. Having someone guide you to look at some of these things is key because we often forget about the things that we are spending money on in our business, investing in, in our business, and really looking at the value that those things are actually providing. Are we making money when using these systems, tools, whatever that we're spending money on? An example here is, you know, if you're investing in ads, but you don't have a return, an ROI on those ads, then it's time to stop those ads. It's really important to have someone make sure that all of these things are accountable, uh, accounted for within your business. You want someone that has some tech savviness that can help you with automations and workflows, someone that can help you with email marketing or lead generation, I shouldn't say or, and lead, lead generation. Someone who understands streamlining and SOPs for your sanity and for client retention. You want someone who understands what a good website is, what SEO is, search engine optimization, and can actually help you write copy effectively that is actually going to resonate and convert so that you are clear and concise and everything about your business is cohesive. It is advantageous to have a coach who is strategic and creative in addition to techie. Having someone that is creative will help with idea generation when you feel stuck. You want someone who understands personal branding and marketing strategy so that you can create a brand marketing strategy that is going to be sustainable and you aren't going to have to backtrack and change what your message is, what your message is that you are communicating on your website or in your social content if you're be choosing to be on social media. Having someone to help with online visibility through digital marketing strategies, someone who has a network to make introductions to you for referrals and collaboration opportunities, someone who will hold you in prayer, support you on the good days and the bad days. Because even with a coach, growing a business can be challenging. You want someone who will share your joy when you have a win, someone who will celebrate with you, cheer you on, really important is that you want someone that can see the big picture of your business. So not only your goals for today and tomorrow, but your goals for the future. So they can help you implement the strategies to get there. You want someone who can actually help you build the foundation so that you can create sustainable success. You don't want to have to start over. You don't want to have to backpedal. You don't want to strip back everything that you've started. It, so what I'm saying here is that if you have someone that you want to hire, evaluate what aspects of your business are they going to help you in and can they support you in building that solid foundation. Now, this message is more for people who are starting out 
Maybe you have just left a nine to five. Maybe you are coming back into the workplace after being a stay-at-home mom. Maybe you lost your job and you're going to take those skills and expertise that you have garnered over the years in corporate and start something of your own so you can have a bigger impact. No matter where you are or why you're starting your business, the key is to implement the strategies that are going to build a solid foundation for sustainable success so that you don't have to backtrack. Eliminate the guesswork to be able to move forward and move forward faster. Now, if you've been in business for a year or two years, five years, but you're not growing at the rate you wanted to, or you did a lot of DIYing in your business when you started, it's time to have it evaluated. Building a successful business requires mastering your personal brand, achieving complete clarity around your soulmate clients and their pain points, needs, wants, and desires, implementing SOPs, standard operating procedures, automation, workflows, creating brand marketing strategies that are effective and aligned with your values, understanding search engine optimization and other digital, digital marketing strategies, implementing strategies that have time or that save time and energy because time and energy equate to money. Evaluating your spend and income ratios, looking at your bottom line with you and giving you recommendations that are sound and again, aligned with your goals and your values and the people that you want to serve. We can't forget them. You also need KPIs, those key performance indices where you are actually looking at the analytics, the data to say, is what I'm doing working or is it not? And this is related to your lead generation and your visibility strategies, as well as your team or any activities you do, including open rates for your email marketing, um, click-through rates, podcast downloads. This is so specific to every single individual business but it's very important to have someone that's going to hold you accountable for actually looking at this data. So over the years, I've heard many objections to hiring coaches. I've heard women say that they don't have time, but mostly what I've heard is they've said, I can't afford it. Or their husband has said they cannot invest in their business. Ah, <sighs> that's a sigh because here's the thing. If you're new to business ownership and entrepreneurship and are starting a business, it behooves you to hire a coach because you don't know what you don't know. And I know that sounds so simple, but the ROI on coaching has been proven. And if you are beginning, you often Truly do not know what you don't know. And if you're trying to build a solid foundation for your business, you will experience endless questions, doubts, overwhelm, and backpedaling if you don't have help. And ultimately, what happens when you try to do it by taking online courses or DIYing is it takes you twice as long, if not longer. If you come from a nine to five environment, and I know nine, we say nine to five, I realize, I recognize that most likely it was not nine to five. It was probably eight to six plus weekends, plus travel. I get that. But if you're coming from that environment where you had a structure, you had an employer, you are accustomed to a support team and you know team leaders and executives are usually used to achieving a high level of success. So if you suddenly don't have a support system and you aren't achieving that level of success that you're accustomed to, you're gonna become overwhelmed and frustrated and potentially 
burned out. You can start your business and do it all yourself, and it's going to take you months to years to do it effectively and to make the level of revenue that you want to make to sustain your family, to be able to live the same lifestyle that you've been accustomed to. And doing it by yourself, you most likely will not be able to achieve that level of success that you desire, at least not in the time frame that you want. Investing in yourself and your business will give you the ability to create a solid foundation for sustainable success, success that will last and that you can scale and you can continue to grow to new levels but there won't be backpedaling involved because you will have built the solid foundation. If you are motivated to start a business, you want sustainable success. I feel like I've said sustainable success a million times. Maybe I have, but it is so important to me that if you are doing this, taking the initiative, let's do it for sustainability. Let's not do it for one year. We know the rate of business failure is very high between the first and five years in business. So let's not be a number. Let's not be a statistic. No one wants to invest time and energy in something temporary. To achieve sustainable success, you must begin with that solid foundation. Think about Matthew 7, 24, 27. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Friend, if God has called you to build a business, he wants you to create a solid foundation for that business. A website is one of the main components of a solid foundation for your business. As Christian business owners and entrepreneurs, our faith is the rock of our business. Related to the tactical things of a business, I often see websites that business owners have created for themselves or were built by a website designer, but they don't have SEO. A poorly designed and ill-functioning website is equally as bad as no website because it will not convert and it may put off or repel your soulmate client. If you don't have the resource to invest in a coach, please consider at least having someone look at your website and ensure your website strategy and SEO work for you and not against you. I see so many websites that are on brand, have poorly written copy, sometimes written by a professional who doesn't understand the brand voice, have no SEO, they're missing crucial pages, don't have images of the owner, and so many other things are missing. Please don't let this be you. Perhaps you feel inspired to take action to ensure your business has a solid foundation so that you can create sustainable success in the business God's called you to create. This inspiration will also help you achieve the impact that is on your heart, the desires that God has created within your heart to have an impact, to serve other people and make a difference in the world. If this describes you, 
then I encourage you to download my free ebook, Five Crucial Strategies to Start and Grow a Business for Sustainable Success Without Social Media. That's my thing. I believe fully that if we build the foundation first and then approach social media later, we're going to be much better off because we won't have the distractions and the chaos, the comparison and imposter syndrome that so often accompany social media. So when you're starting out, or if you have started out and you're using tools like social media, but you're not getting the results you want, it's time to go back to the basics, back to building the foundation so that you can truly achieve that sustainable success. And friend, don't let anyone convince you that you don't have the resources to invest in coaching because there are ways to get the money to be able to invest, especially knowing that you are going to get an ROI and not just for the duration of the coaching package, but for the duration of your business for the rest of your life. All right, that's it for today. I thank you for being here with me. I love and appreciate each and every one of you who put me in your ears every week. And I do hope that you found this information beneficial. And if you did, please share it with someone else that you know who is trying to grow a business but may feel stuck. Until next time. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me. And be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.